Paul Quinn was only 21 when he was beaten to death by a masked gang. I think he was expecting, you know, a, somebody to come up and hit him or something like that there, but I don't think he expected what he was, what he got like. Paul was killed because uh, he got into the fight with a, a couple of different people about the area and he was killed because of that, to beat him, to beat him up and beat him to death. If the RA was involved, it could threaten the peace process. There is evidence that some of the individuals involved in the murder have connections to the IRA, in some cases, family connections. Now, that's a matter of concern to us. I have been speaking to people who are involved in the IRA on the ground there. They're saying they aren't involved in it. They say that they are convinced that none of their members uh, were involved in this incident, uh, and they are not aware of who was responsible for it. I don't know how the people that done it can go to bed at night because I can't get up in the mornings to face the day. Just over three weeks ago, Paul Quinn from Cully Hanna in South Armagh was lured here and he was beaten to death by masked men wielding iron bars. His family blamed the IRA, and Sinn Féin strongly deny this. If his murder was sanctioned by the IRA, that has serious implications for the peace process. So on tonight's Spotlight, we ask, who killed Paul Quinn? On the afternoon of Saturday the 20th of October, according to a first-hand account given to Spotlight, Paul Quinn got a call from two friends asking him to help them clear a barn just over the border near Castle Blaney to make room for cattle. Unknown to Paul, a gang had already taken his two friends hostage and forced one of them to call him, drawing Paul into a deadly trap. Paul Quinn decided to spread the work and enlisted the help of a friend. That afternoon, Paul and his friend drove along this road, just over the border, and to this barn. They got out of the car, they saw nothing suspicious, and they made their way down here to the back of the barn. The gang moved in quickly, surrounding Paul and his friend and beating them to the ground. His friend was dragged off to another part of the barn where the other victims were being held. But according to our first-hand account, it was clear who the gang were really interested in. After separating Paul Quinn from his friends, the men systematically and savagely beat him with iron bars. As they did, they delivered a chilling message. We're the bosses round here. Paul Quinn's friends could hear his screams. Even after the screams stopped and Paul went quiet, the beating continued. As the men prepared to leave, the boys heard them spraying something on the ground. The victim's phones were smashed and they were warned not to move for half an hour. The gang then left in a van they had hidden in the barn. But one of the victims was able to use his phone to call Paul's girlfriend, Emma, who lived nearby. I was at home on the computer and I was texting Paul and then next thing his friend rang me and said that would tell me to ring an ambulance and I was there, what do you want me to ring an ambulance for? And said just ring an ambulance and when I hung up the phone I rang the ambulance and then I got into the car and went on down the road. I thought at first, you know, that he got his knees blow, blown off or something because there was like blood all around his knees or whatever and I think it was, it was bone sticking out of his leg. He was just all completely battered, like he wasn't fit to move right? and You wouldn't even expect a dog to be battered the way he was battered. 
At this point, Paul was struggling to remain conscious. He wanted to go home and I told him that I couldn't take him home. And um, he just, I, I told him there was an ambulance coming and he kept saying, when's the ambulance coming? But he couldn't even say it. He couldn't even talk the way I'm talking. He was kept mumbling and all because he was not much pain. He couldn't even talk right. When the ambulance arrived, he was taken to hospital in Drogheda. I thought he was, you know, I thought like he just got a bait and like he had broken legs and then he was going to be all right in a few weeks. Like. Paul's parents had been told what had happened and were on their way to the hospital. And on our way up to Drahoy, we got another phone call to say that he, he had to get some sort of tube down his throat to breathe for him, that he wasn't fit to breathe for himself. And I knew at that stage that he was in serious trouble, you know. Paul's injuries were horrific. He had multiple broken bones and severe internal injuries. We were taken in a room, a small room, and we were told to work. There was a medical team working on him and doing their best, and they were still working on him, but... And I guess the doctor, did he, was, would he survive? And he said, no, I don't think so. Yeah, he, he was dead at that stage that he was, but they were trying to revive him. And he, that's tried it for now, I think. It was no good.